Okay, so I wanted to take a minute to go through a couple more scenarios of the Card Defender program today. Um, those being voiding a transaction, returning a transaction, and why that's different, um, and then how to manually enter a credit card if for some reason the magnetic stripe on a card isn't working. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to ring up a transaction. Um, and uh, let's go through it the normal sort of way. So I'm going to swipe my card here. And notice that, you know, another little point here is that while the magnetic stripe needs to be facing down, you can swipe at it from either side. I'll sign for this. And once the signature downloads to the terminal, the transaction is going to complete. Okay, so we finished a transaction. Life is good. Um, now, uh, now we let's pretend for whatever reason we need to avoid that transaction. So I'm going to go to recall. Um, and depending on how your keyboard is set up or your touch screen, this workflow might be a little bit different, but I assume you know, whoever's watching knows how to avoid a transaction. Uh, so here's my transaction from today. And uh, based on how I have my system set up, I had to give a reason code. Um, but um, this will prompt will appear, and it says a customer needs to use the payment terminal. But in the case of a void that's happening right now today, the customer won't have to do anything. Okay, it just voided the transaction from the terminal and it's not going to get settled. Okay, meaning you won't end up getting the money. Now, this would have not worked the same way if we would have tried to avoid a transaction from uh, yesterday or a week ago or basically any time after you settled your batch, which, you're, which you need to do every single day on each terminal. Um, so, in those situations, it would have asked the customer to swipe the card that they wanted to put money back onto. And uh, we'll take a look at what that looks like next. So instead of voiding a transaction, I'm going to do a return. So this would be a scenario where maybe you're not recalling the original transaction. You know, you went into, I'm going to go into actually into return mode. So there's a lot of different ways, again, to um, do a, a return. But I'll ring up the product. You can see it shows up as a negative quantity, and the total on the transaction is also negative. So um, it's doing a refund. It's asking for a credit card. And now it's saying that the amount is negative $1.09. Now, because we're not referencing any kind of original transaction, it's asking me to swipe the card. Okay, and that didn't go through the way I wanted it to. We'll try it again quick. All right. Okay, so um, this is actually putting money back onto the card. So if you can't reference the original transaction or the transaction or you're trying to avoid a transaction that took place some time other than today or perhaps on another terminal, and then you're going to need to swipe the card. And that's another really good point I want to make is that these references to these transactions and the details needed to avoid them reside on the payment terminal itself until you settle. That means if you have more than one till and you want to avoid a transaction, you're either going to need to avoid it on the terminal where it originally took place or you can do a return onto the card on another terminal, but you'll need to swipe. Um, I, my strong preference would be that if you really are intending on voiding the transaction, that you void it on the same terminal. Because if you don't, it'll show up as a charge for X amount of dollars and then a negative charge for X amount of dollars on the credit cards. So I'll have two lines. Whereas if you void it, it's kind of like it never happened. All right, so that's voids and returns. Um, the last one is a manual entry of, of a credit card. So um, I'm going to ring up another sample item. And, and you saw it just a second ago. I had an issue 
with the credit card where it asked me to swipe it again. It, it gave me a track error. Now you can swipe it again, try it again, and most times that'll solve the problem. But if you really have a beat up credit card, then uh, you probably are going to need to actually type in that number. So at this point, it's hard for me to see, so bear with me. But I just manually enter the card number. Okay, so I entered in the card number. Now it's asking me for the expiration date. So you do it month, month, year, year. So if it was January, it'd be 01. This happens to be December, December of 2015. And now the CVV number is that number on the back of the card. Now at this point, you don't have to enter this. And now it's asking for the address. I'm just going to hit enter. It's asking for the zip code. I'm going to hit enter. And now it's, it actually might give me a decline, but it's processing. Um, the more of that information you enter, the cheaper it will be to process the credit card. Okay, because the credit card companies consider hand-entered credit cards to be of higher risk, and therefore they charge you more dollars to process that card. And if you put in the CVV number or the zip code, in, to them, this reduces the risk of a fraudulent transaction. In a way, it kind of proves that you have the physical card and you just didn't get the number from somewhere. So really, the only thing that's needed is a number and a date, expiration date, and it'll process. I'd strongly recommend that you at least put in the CVV number that's very simple to put in, um, and it should reduce your credit card's fees. So there you have it how to avoid a transaction and again you can only avoid a transaction at the same point of sale station where it was rung up and it has to be done before you settle the batch otherwise it's going to happen like a return and a return can be done without having to reference an original transaction it's really any transaction that has a negative amount you can do a return to and those are going to ask you to swipe the credit card. And it's going to put that money back on. And then lastly, how to manually enter a card number if it won't swipe. Uh, thanks for watching.